Hey YouTube, what the crap is going on? Air here with some more footage. I actually had some really amazing Napoleon Total War footage for you. If it weren't for uh, Rage Quitters and Steam, I would have been able to show it to you. So I got dropped from three games on Napoleon and had two Rage Quits. So out of six total games, um, I finished five. And um, the one that I actually did get to save the replay on was crappy. So that was pretty irritating. Wasted hours on here trying to get you footage, and thanks to Rage Quitters and Steam, didn't end up a squat. Uh, but I have a couple of Rome games to show you. These aren't, like, spectacularly amazing, but they're pretty good. Um, I say they're pretty good. They're really, I, I don't know, they're okay. But I think you all like the videos regardless. And uh, I'm using a little bit of a different Roman army here. Um, it's not super powerful, but my opponent, I could tell, probably was bringing kind of a odd Carthaginian army, so I figured it would be all right. So I've got um, three Roman archers. I've got uh, four legionary cohorts. I've got one Praetorian cohort, which is where my general is. He's out here. I've got a legionary first cohort, which is right here. Two auxilia spearmen. And I've got two Roman cav and two legionary cav. One of my legionary cav is hidden in the woods to begin with. My opponent's playing his Carthage. He has five slingers, one Balearic slinger. His infantry line, two, three, four, five... Or no, it looks like he's got... Three pointy, four sacred band with minimal upgrades on the sacred band. He's got some uh, sacred band cav out here with uh, minimal upgrades, four units. Over here, he's got a fifth unit of sacred band and uh, two long shields. So my opponent has a lot of troops at relatively low quality. Um, I have quite a few troops too, <coughs> at uh, definitely better quality. Though he does have the uh, cavalry advantage, even though mine are upgraded better, his sacred band are definitely superior to mine in this case. I decided to use light infantry spearmen to help support my cavalry rather than going for cav numbers, as it's not super historically accurate for the Romans to be fielding tons of excellent cavalry unless they had auxilia. So in any case, here we go. I'm going to open fire on the slingers. This is a fight that I will surely lose if I continue it, um, but I do get some first shots here which kind of help kill a few of the enemy troops. I mean, it's not going to be absolutely blinding by any means. I'm most worried about his Balearic Slingers, so I do focus some fire on them. His Balearic Slingers actually outrange my um, my archers, but he doesn't get them in a very good position here. He should have screened with his big line of Slingers, and then um, used his Balearic Slingers range to hit me from a distance, and he would have been able to take out my um, my uh, archers. Well, all I'm going to do is just going to start slowly marching forward. Uh, my Roman infantry is not real susceptible to his Slingers. So I'll just march forward and uh, absorb some shots and uh, push his slingers back so that my archers can continue to fire. You can see I'm hurting his Balearic slingers quite bad, and a few of his other slinger units are a little beat up. Um, he did not um, aim at my archers. He's just allowing auto-fire, which means his guys are hitting my uh, cohorts and causing almost no damage. So I'm pushing up some auxilia and some cav on each flank and then holding the center with my infantry. I'm going to run a little bit of Roman, uh, Roman cab in here, and um, I've been having to take some medicine today for allergies, so I'm a little out of it, so my micro was not real spectacular during this battle, but I do go after some of his slingers, and I've got my infantry positioned out here to, to attack his cavalry. So yeah, I get a few of his slingers. He does a, a hasty cavalry charge right into my uh, heavy infantry, which was a bad idea. I send these auxilia into a sacred band, and then I end up taking uh, these long shields, and the rest of my cab down here with the first cohort to try and intercept these uh, long shields. This was a decent idea on my opponent's part, but definitely too hasty. So my auxilia over here routed in the midst of all this cavalry. My Praetorian cohort's going to hold out because it's my general, and I reinforce with that hidden unit of legionary cav. Uh, but that's still going to be a tough fight on that flank. In the center, uh, my Roman cab and everything, uh, one of them got caught on his spearmen, which was just an absolute blunder on my part. Look at this. His uh, Sacred Band Cavalry just won, basically, in an out-and-out -out fight against my Spearmen. Shows you the uh, quality of Roman Spears. They route. That's not even a super heavy unit. Alright, so the enemy General's dead. I'm chasing off his Slingers, so I now have uh, the ranged advantage. My uh, opponent is paying attention elsewhere. This fight is end up being a very close one. His Sacred Band Cavalry really held out even with my uh, Praetorian cohort here. But eventually that fight's going to turn into my favor. He let this uh, Sacred Band Cav get caught in my heavy infantry, and I'm going to open up with flaming arrows um, just to try and kill some of his more heavily armored men. It may or may not accomplish much, but I'm going to do it nonetheless. So my Cav is busy uh, chasing down his slingers and routing units. 
making sure they don't come back, which is going to give me uh, the easy advantage here. Looks like I'm in pretty good shape. My opponent decides to rush forward, so I go ahead and move my archers back, and I'm going to turn the uh, fire at will on for my legionnaires so that they get their pilla. Uh, my opponent is coming into a superior terrain position than I am, but he doesn't spread his men out. He should have put his men out into a long, thin line and then left a couple behind to defend against my cav. Instead, he comes in in a very blocky formation, which is good for maneuvering, uh, but not so good whenever you're getting hammered with pilla. So you can see that my pillow is going to cause some pretty massive damage to his units. So yep, yeah, that pillow storm was uh, pretty devastating. I charge my Romans forward. And uh, his guys, because they're in blocky formation, they get broken up. And this makes them a perfect target for a hammer and anvil strike. So we're going to see my uh, legionary cav right here just devastate this unit of pointy infantry. And they're going to rout, so I'm going to leave immediately. And I've got more units uh, back here available for hammer and anvil strikes. This is just a Roman cav unit. It gets sacred band, so I just do a quick hit and then run away. I probably lost more men there than he did. But I've now broken through on this flank, and I've got even more cav back here ready for more strikes. Still got flaming arrows going after some of his men. And here I decide to bring in one final decisive um, cross-the-line hammer and anvil blow along with my Praetorian cohort. And this is going to be enough to just break the remainder of the Carthaginian army. So you're going to see that uh, some of their units hold out for just a second, but then the, uh, the rout is contagious, and uh, the remainder of the Carthaginian army routes in the face of overwhelming Roman numbers. So I hope you enjoyed this battle. Uh, like I said, it wasn't like a crazy amazing one, but it was pretty fun. Uh, good game to my opponent, and I've got actually one more for you. But we'll take a look at the results screen first. And this day is clearly our victory! All right, let's go do the other one. Sorry, I just have to check a message on my phone real quick. Let's go pull the other replay. This one was an interesting matchup. I'm not sure I've ever played a matchup between these two factions. Um, and I could see it going either way, to be honest, but it probably would favor. <clears throat> so this is Numidia versus Scythia. So it would be an interesting matchup indeed. This is 15k, and um, I told my opponent max two horse archers. Um, it's not CWB, but I did say max six of the same unit and um, elephants were only allowed at one. So I do have a mercenary war elephant unit. I've got uh, three long shield cav, two Numidian camel riders, which these guys get a bonus in the desert, plus they scare horses. I've got three desert infantry, which get a bonus in the desert. And I've got three Numidian legionnaires. I knew that I wouldn't have to be scared of any Scythian um, infantry, because their infantry sucks. Um, it's their headhunting maidens and um, archers to be feared. So if you bring Scythia with a couple of horse archers, some chosen archer warbands, some cheese hunting maidens, and you've got yourself one powerful army. So what I've done here though is brought the elephants and I'm going to keep them in the back because um, if I can wait till the right moment to use these elephants, um, I can easily route any infantry or cavalry that's bogged down in a fight. So I'm going to be using these elephants mostly for morale busting, not so much for massive kills. At least that's the plan. We'll see what happens. And then I've got five Numidian archers, or just archers up front. They're the dudes with the little cool helmets there. Anyway... Let's take a look at my opponent's army. Uh, he's brought a fairly intelligent army for Scythia, with one exception in my opinion. He's got a very tough archer line here. He's got uh, two archer warbands and, um, or no, three archer warbands. What am I saying that right? Yeah, three archer warbands and a chosen archer warband. Um, he's got a Scythian noble archer over here and here, so he's got his two horse archers, so he has a very tough skirmishing component. He's got some cheese hunting maidens on uh, both flanks, but only two units of them, and he's brought these Scythian nobles. That was his mistake. He should have just brought more of these head hunting maidens, as the Scythian noble cab is crap. Absolute dog crap. And instead of bringing the Scythian noble archers, he should have just brought regular horse archers and more cheese hunting maidens. Uh, that would have been the way to go. Um, because that's Scythia's strength, and so that's honestly what they should be bringing. So I'm going to move up. Uh, his guys outrange me pretty badly in the skirmishing department. Um, to be honest, for me to win this skirmishing fight, it's not going to be easy. I do have a lot of skirmishers, but um, his are higher quality than mine, and they're going to outrange mine. 
and he's got horse archers. So I say that I have more. I technically don't. Technically, with his horse archers, he has one more. And I guess I have my elephants, but you don't want to use elephants for skirmishing, because if they start getting hit with flaming arrows, they'll die. So you got to be careful about that. So I am going to move up my infantry to try and stay nearby my uh, archers. My opponent should be using his uh, cheese hunting maidens to try and uh, come kill my archers. His head hunting maidens would easily kill a lot of my cav. The only exception, possibly, like my camel riders, they may possibly scare them off or something. I doubt it. But the head hunting maidens can actually kill cataphracts if you get them in the right situation. So um, the axes that the head hunting maidens have are extremely potent. Uh, so for a light cavalry unit, they're deadliest light cav on the game by a long shot. Um, and they're actually deadlier than a lot of heavy cav. Not on the charge, but once the fight gets going, then they're very deadly. So I focus fire over here on this uh, this archer warband and this chosen archer warband. And I'm going to leave these two archer warbands alone for the most part. I want to take down some of his uh, long range components so that he can't shoot my elephants. So I am keeping my elephants back at a distance. Because a few flaming volleys could possibly run my elephants amok. And thus render about 3,000 denarii useless for me. So I have to use my elephants well. So this turns into a pretty massive skirmishing fight, which should be the case. Numidia and Scythia are both kind of skirmishing factions. Numidia because they can bring slingers and archers, and Scythia because they have horse archers, chosen archers, and archer warbands. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting setup. Anyway, his uh, Scythian noble archers are over here shooting. These guys are just a whole lot of money and don't really do a whole lot different than horse archers, other than take up a lot more denarii. They're really not all that great in a melee. Um... Definitely should have uh, saved his money and, like I said, brought more of those headhunting maidens. So you can see that I am going to rip up these uh, these two missile units on this flank. Uh, my archers on this flank are getting trashed by his. That's because I'm focus firing right now. And I keep pulling my camels back because he's taking pot shots at my camels with his noble archers. There's not much I can do about it. I can't chase him down. They're going to have the fast-moving trait like all horse archers. The only way I might possibly be able to catch these guys is if I had, like... Um, a light cav like a Numidian cav, but the Numidian cav probably wouldn't be able to beat them in a melee. And plus, he can support with these headhunting maidens, which you gotta watch out for. So I've pretty much finished off these two archer units. I'm gonna try and put a little fire down on his uh, two archer warbands that are remaining. Uh, my opponent's finally moving a little bit here. He's gonna harass me with some uh, some infantry. Fired a few flaming arrows at my camels. So, yeah. I think he was, yeah, he's moving some uh, axemen out here for some reason. Not really sure what that reasoning is. Nothing happening on this flank. Uh, he really should have these horse archers doing something rather than nothing. Here he's going to do a pretty smart move. He's going to run these axemen forward and chase my archers out. I didn't see this coming. Um, and so I start trying to click orders for my archers to run away, and they just stand here like idiots, which happens a lot, and they very nearly get killed. Eventually, after clicking in a run order about 50 times, they ran away. If that had been cavalry, I would have lost them. And he most definitely should have been using these headhunting maidens for that exact purpose. So what he's doing is chasing my archers back so his can keep firing while mine keep getting shot. Um, it's a pretty common tactic, and it's a good one. So if he tries to do it again, I will have a different reaction. And until then, I'm going to let my archers just kill as many of his archers as possible. So I'm going to click an attack order on... Uh, one of his archer warbands over here and just, like I said, kill as many of them as I can and plus let his waste all the ammo I can. I don't want him to get done and have a whole bunch of ammo left to try and use on my elephants. He's already got his horse archers, which he's not using to high effect right now. Um, right now, both of his um, horse archers are disengaged, I believe, which is a waste for him. Yeah, Scythian Noble Archers disengaged, same thing over here. They're just idle. So my opponent wasted those Scythian Noble Archers, not to mention the money. Now I'm not trying to be mean to him. He was a nice guy. I like playing the game with him, and I thought his name was pretty clever. Um, so anyway, he starts running his axemen forward again, but this time my archers are going to remain where they're at, and I'm going to chase away his axemen with my uh, Numidian Legionnaires. Um, if his axemen had proper upgrades, they would probably be an equal fight to my Numidian Legionnaires, but they don't. So my uh, Legionnaires will be better troops for sure. So this is going to allow the uh, skirmish fight to kind of wind down. My opponent is going to win, um, but I'm not terribly concerned with the number of archers he's got left. I'm concerned with the, uh, the Scythian uh, noble archers, which he's finally starting to use again. And it looks like he's going to start using them on my uh, camels again. He's determined to get rid of these camels, which is um, a pretty intelligent move, because they do have a frightening effect on cavalry. 
problem for my opponent is his infantry is much weaker than mine. So I'm going to be able to take a minimal amount of infantry and try and attack his while supporting my cavalry with these uh, desert infantry which get a bonus in the desert. Now what I have to be careful of is he may or may not know that the... where's his headhunting maidens? Uh, somewhere around here should be his headhunting maidens. Here's some. These, uh, these ladies right here can charge into my Numidian legionnaires and probably kill them. Um, so that's something I have to be careful of in the center. So yes, I do have a heavy infantry advantage, um, but it's, you know, I've got to be careful. Scythia can get some quick strikes in and sometimes deal a death blow. And I do have my elephants, though. But uh, using those properly is going to be tricky. At this point, I was just, like I said, letting the skirmish fight wind down, letting him waste some ammo. Uh, I'm not, like, real concerned about the number of foot archers he has left, because they will have used some of their ammo. I am concerned, like I said, with the Scythian no archers, which can pretty much attack me with impunity. And um, there's not much I can do about it, because I can't chase them down. At least not easily. Here they are shooting. They're not really causing all that much damage, though, as far as I can tell. So I'm not super concerned about it. They're slowly whittling down some of my camels over here. I should have pulled those camels back further. Made him fire at my desert infantry. Here I'm going to go ahead and start making some moves. I'm going to start moving my cavalry up, moving my general up to support my infantry in the center. And I'm going to start running these, uh, or walking these desert infantry up the flank to help support my cavalry, which would otherwise lose against his own. Not if the elephants were engaged, but I would definitely lose if uh, it was just my cavalry versus his, even with the camels, I think. I'm not really certain of it, but I'm pretty certain of it. So here he's going to run his axemen, uh, and I'm going to take my general right up the center too and knock out um, some of these archer warbands, at least I think I am. I went ahead and clicked a pillet order here, kill some of his axemen. Yep, here goes my general. So I'm going to kill the remainder of his foot archers just real quick so he doesn't have them. I'm not super concerned about my general unit although it is in grave danger from these headhunting maidens. So I do run it back. Over here, fight begins. He charges his cav right into my desert infantry, which was a mistake. Uh, desert infantry do get a bonus for his cav, and uh, the Scythian nobles end up winning just due to a morale factor, but uh, they took some pretty dang uh, decent losses for how short that fight was. In fact, I'm really surprised my desert infantry uh, routed right there. In the center, though, I've uh, routed his uh, headhunting maidens with the combined arms deal here and chased them off. And uh, then I'm also bringing my elephants up towards the center because I see a blob fight coming, and that's where elephants come in handy. Indeed, here comes the blob fight. He's going to run in uh, his headhunting maidens and his uh, Scythian nobles and his general, and uh, basically even more cav. So my general gets himself. killed, but I'm going to bring in these infantry for a holding maneuver. And my opponent should have been running away with his cav right here, but he did not. So my infantry pin him down, and then here comes my elephants. And the morale effect is just going to instantly rout um, all of his uh, barbarian units. Now my opponent wasn't real happy to see that route, and I can't say I blame him. But uh, elephants do have a massive morale effect on horses, and especially when they get hit from the flank. So, uh, and plus Scythia is a barbarian faction and probably suffers from pretty skittish morale. So at this point, I've got my opponent um, out here. My uh, long shield cab are cleaning up these uh, Scythian uh, noble archers. So those noble archers couldn't even beat my long shield cab, which is technically a light cab unit. Um, so that's why I'm saying like bringing them is kind of pointless, just because they're uh, they're not good enough in a melee to be worth the money. You might as well just bring regular horse archers and then spend the saved money on um, upgrading your other cab or bringing heavier cab. But I'm going to chase out these uh, Scythian nobles feeling uh, overly confident with my cav right now. I've got some Numidian camel riders. I start to run away because he brings his nobles and some uh, chosen warlord back. But then I decide, whatever, I'll just stand and fight. If I lose, it's not a big deal. I'll kill most of his remaining cavalry. So the, uh, the Scythian nobles will have a better, um, a better armor, but my long shields um, have the shield, which uh, obviously gives them extra defense. And, uh, Believe it or not, you're going to see my long shields here actually just straight out beat his Scythian nobles. I don't know if that's due to morale or what, but um, you can see that the Scythian noble cab is just trash. Had those been headhunting maidens, I would have gotten destroyed. So here's his chosen uh, warlord and a few nobles and some infantry, and then he's got his headhunting maidens coming back. And this is going to rout my long shields. 
Yeah, check out his headhunting maidens. Surprisingly, they actually routed. He must have tried to run them through or something. So, uh, my long shield cav ended up routing too, though. They did pretty darn well, actually. I've got another unit of long shield cab right here that's been untouched, so I'm in pretty good shape in the cab department. Plus, I've still got my elephants. I don't have any archers, though, except for this uh, one lone archer who's survived. He's uh, the lone ranger, I guess. So, yeah, it's just a matter of me attacking the remainder of my opponent's troops, and he's being a good sport and not really running around all over the map um, and just kind of facing this down. Oh, there's some pretty nice orange slacks you guys got going there. Very stylish. So, yep, I'm just going to march up my Numidian troops, and we'll have the final battle. My opponent goes down in a blaze of glory here, just like uh, like it's fun to do. So, there's my Legionnaires taking on his Axemen, which route instantly because of the morale effects due to uh, the army size. I'm going to get his archers, too. And uh, I believe I've even got my elephants firing into here, but they're not going to do a whole lot of damage with their missiles. Here comes my long shield cab to finish off these uh, noble archers. Good game to my opponent. Uh, we'll check out the statistics. Interesting matchup. You're certainly not going to see uh, Numidia versus Scythia very often. And, and honestly, if the Scythian player brings the right army, it would be pretty darn hard for Numidia to win. But it's an interesting matchup. So let's take a look at the uh, casualties. So one of my archers got 130 kills, basically, which is pretty darn good. Um, I had a long shield cavalry, uh, two long shield cav that just cleaned house, probably off of routing units and whatnot. You can see my elephants didn't do much, but the morale effect was massive. Uh, one of my desert infantry kind of did okay, and the others pretty much sucked. Um, anyway, good game to my opponent. Hope you enjoyed it. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.